Hello everyone, my name is Quackney and I'm here to ask and answer one question. Can you beat Fallout New Vegas as the Arizona Ranger? If you've played New Vegas before, then you have surely heard the song Big Iron by Marty Robbins. The song tells a story about the town of Agua Fria being liberated from an outlaw named Texas Red by a handsome Arizona Ranger. In this run, I'll be role-playing as the Arizona Ranger. So, let's explain the rules of the run. Just like in the song, I can only use 357 Magnums. I can only fire from the hip like an old western duel, though that's is okay. I must side with the NCR and become an NCR Ranger. And I must always be law-abiding. Some other additional information, I will be playing on the normal difficulty on the PC version of Fallout New Vegas with all DLCs and no mods. Though, having no mods will likely change for future New Vegas runs, you'll see why later. We'll come to learn that New Vegas is a very functional and not at all buggy game. Everything works as intended from this point forward. With the rules established, let's get on with the run. Our game starts the same as any other, I, a male courier, immediately get shot in the head by Matthew Perry wearing a black and white check suit. He then steals the package I'm supposed to deliver and leaves me in a shallow grave. Fortunately for us, a robot named Victor digs us up and brings us to Doc Mitchell. He patches us up and we're off to the Vigor Tester to select our special stats. Special stats I go with are as follows. 5 Strength, 4 Perception, 4 Endurance, 1 Charisma, Dumb Stat, 8 Intelligence for Skill Points, 9 Agility because the swiftness of the Ranger is still talked about today, and 9 Luck because I will be going for crits to make this build viable. I tag the Guns, Lockpick, and Repair skills. You might ask yourself why I tag Lockpick if I'm not supposed to be breaking the law, but I'll need it later to get the gun I'll use for this run. As for my traits, I take skill for a plus 5 in every skill, and I take small frame for a plus 1 agility to max out at 10. With character creation being finished, Doc Mitchell gives me some supplies I mostly can't use in a pit boy. I waste no time taking everything not bolted down inside his house so that I can sell it later. He lets me do this, so it's not technically stealing. Now over encumbered, I make my way to Chet at Good Springs General Store and I begin to sell all of Doc Mitchell's belongings. I also find a couple of 357 rounds, but unfortunately, no gun. Inside Good Springs Saloon, I talk to Sunny Smiles and she teaches me how to shoot some empty bottles. Don't worry, these bottles are in fact not alive, so no foul play here. The run is still on. She then takes me to a water hole to kill some geckos and we come face to face with the first problem of this run. Unlike empty bottles, these geckos are very much alive, so shooting them with the varmint rifle Sunny gifted me would fail the run. I need a 357. So I got the idea to check Good Spring Cemetery. According to the New Vegas Wiki, it is possible to find a 357 by digging up these graves as the loot they contain is randomly generated. But I had no such luck even after reloading my game. The looting these graves must be determined when you create a new save file or when you first leave Doc Mitchell's house. Either way, it's a bust and I begin my way to Black Mountain. As the Wiki also says, the dead NCR Ranger carries a 357 and it's relatively close to Good Springs. Also, as I leave Good Springs, I use the skilled exploit by choosing to remake my character when the game asks and taking the skilled perk again. When you take the skilled perk, the plus 5 bonus to your skills is applied immediately, so when you take it again here, you get a plus 10 to all stats. While on my way to Black Mountain, I discovered the Yangtze Memorial. Next to an old sign there, I found a duffel bag, and inside that bag, I find a 357 revolver and 9 357 rounds. I thought it would take a bit longer to find the weapon for this run, but you won't find me complaining. I head back to the water holes and take out some geckos, being careful to land as many shots as I can as ammo is scarce. I even manage to save the Good Spring Settler who gets ambushed by them, but later we find out she does not come out unscathed. Geckos taken care of, I enter the saloon and find Joe Cobb, a leader of a group of escaped convicts called the Powder Gangers threatening Trudy and the whole town of Good Springs if they don't turn over a man named Ringo they think is hiding somewhere nearby. And as it turns out, Ringo is hiding in an abandoned gas station in town. I talk to him and offer my help in protecting him from the powder gangers. He then tasks me with getting as much help from the locals as I can. First up is Sunny Smiles who takes no convincing. This man has had far too much to drink. Next up is Easy Pete who I convinced to give me his stash of dynamite. Dynamite I cannot use, but I do end up selling it. I talk to Trudy and use my sneak skill to devise a plan to ambush the powder gangers from the saloon. She's satisfied with this and agrees to join our militia. 
Her roommate, the woman I saved from the geckos, appears to have some kind of brain damage from the attack. I did my best, but we can't all be heroes. Last on my list is Doc Mitchell. He's no good in a fight, but he does give me some medical supplies that I keep for myself. The town of Good Springs is ready for battle, so I inform Ringo that it's time for war. The powdered gangers are dealt with with relative ease, though I do try to be sparing with my ammo. Fortunately, I find some more ammo on some of their corpses. At this point, I'm supposed to follow leads to find Benny, the man who shot and robbed me, but having played this game before, I already know where he is. I stop by Prim on my way to his location and talk to an NCR trooper who tells me the town is off limits, because giving a bunch of convicts a bunch of dynamite is apparently a bad idea. They took over the town. A bunch of outlaws taking the town hostage? Sounds like my kind of job. Inside Prim's old casino, I do some trading with Johnson Nash who tells me the Prim sheriff has been killed and the deputy kidnapped. I enter the Bison Steve Hotel with 13 rounds and start blasting my way through to find Deputy Beagle. This safe right here is very important and the reason I tagged the lockpick skill. With the convicts all dead, I find Deputy Beagle and release him from his binds after finding out he's a complete coward and does not want to fulfill his role as sheriff now that he's free. So I reprogram Prim Slim, a robot who can tell you the historic facts about the notorious criminal duo Vicky and Vance. Since no one cares about that garbage, I made him the new sheriff. And then my game crashes. While relaunching, the game gets stuck at an infinite loading screen and crashes. Surely this won't happen again. Later on in the town of Nipton, I find the place in ruins thanks to Vulpus and his crew of Legion soldiers. If I had the ammo, I would have brought them to justice then and there, but seeing as I did not, I let it be for another day. Nearing this trip now, I fought some Viper gunslingers on the canyon, and my game crashed. When I arrived at the strip, because I had been selling everything that wasn't a 357 Magnum or its respective bullets, I already had enough caps to pass to the Securitron checkpoint. This man did not. He was a poor, and he paid for it. And this Securitron was so happy about a job well done, he started to dance. Inside the strip proper, I meet Victor, who I neglected to thank for saving my life at Good Springs. He tells me that Mr. House would like to speak with me and invites me inside the Lucky 38 Casino. But I have other business to attend to first, so I head to the Tops Casino to find Benny. I'm forced to hand over my weapons at the counter, so when I find Benny, I cannot deliver swift justice. Instead, we agree to meet at his suite to talk things over. Finding Benny gives me a ton of XP and I level up, getting my lockpick to level 75. Which means it's time to return to that safe I mentioned before. Inside the safe is a unique 357 Magnum called Lucky. This gun is what we'll use for the rest of the run. Compared to a standard 357, Lucky deals more damage, has a higher fire rate, has a higher critical chance multiplier, and costs less AP to use in vats. Back at the tops, I find Benny's room. And surprise to no one, the man is nowhere to be seen. Though he does have a reprogrammed Securitron named Yes Man. But I'm not going for his ending this run, so I leave him be and decide to start working on the NCR quest line. As I leave the tops, my game crashes. I make my way to the NCR base on the strip and talk to Ambassador Dennis Crocker. He tells me the NCR must prepare for the upcoming conflict with Caesar's Legion and tasks me with convincing the Boomers to aid the NCR. Just outside the Boomers airfield, a man named George warns me that if I try to approach, the Boomers will launch explosives at me and I will surely die. But for a small fee, he will show me the way to get past. I tell him to take a hike and he does, well, this. I think he's probably just fine. I make it past the artillery and this pole tells me I have to go talk to one of the Boomer's elders, Pearl. After talking with Pearl, I learn that in order to get the Boomers to side with the NCR, I must do some quests to gain their trust. I start off by restarting their generators and restoring power. I also take time to clear out their bug problem. Not wanting to leave the job half done, I plant a sonic emitter in the anthill to ensure they stay gone. Outside, I repair some damaged reflector panels. And then there's Jack, who finds himself infatuated with a member of the Crimson Caravan that he's been observing from afar. I agree to go talk to her in his stead. And as it turns out, she feels the same way. I just need permission from Pearl to let her visit. Pearl says yes. 
I return to Janet and give her a boomer outfit so she can enter the airfield. And just like that, the two lovers are united. I then listened to a long-winded history lesson about the boomers, which glitched several times. Moving on to their final mission, I've been tasked with helping the boomers recover a sunken bomber plane at the bottom of the lake. I swim down to the bottom and I attach two ballast packages to the B-29 bomber. Make my way to the shore and I watch it rise from the depths, earning the boomers trust and their commitment to the NCR. I return to Ambassador Crocker with the good news and he wastes no time giving me my next assignment. He wants me to assassinate a member of the King's Gang in Freeside without raising suspicion. I decide to do things non-violently so I start doing quests for the King. First, he hires me to investigate a bodyguard on the Strip who he thinks is a bit too successful at his job. So I hire Oris to take me across the Strip and observe that he at one point kills four thugs with only three shots. Investigating the bodies shows that they're faking their own death, proving that he's a fraud. I return to the King with my findings and... my game crashes. I relaunch and... my game crashes. I finally get the game running again and I start to investigate a beating for the king, and find out it was some NCR troopers, but after some more investigating I learn the conflict between the kings and the NCR is mostly just a misunderstanding. Returning to the king, I tell him this and we learn that there's a fight going on right now between the kings and the NCR, so I race over to put a stop to it. I am able to convince Elizabeth that the king wants to help with relief efforts in Freeside and things calm down. After all that, I'm able to then convince the king to work with the NCR. Returning to Ambassador Crocker, I tell him of the newfound peace within Freeside. Then tells me he has no further missions for me and to report to Hoover Dam for my next assignment. At Hoover Dam, I speak to Colonel Cassandra Moore who will be giving me my missions going forward. The first of which is to ensure that the Great Khans do not side with Caesar's Legion in the coming war. On my way to meet the Great Khans, you would not believe what happened. Once I get to the Great Khans, I think about how to tackle the situation. I personally don't really care for the Great Khan missions, and they are mostly a bunch of drug addicts that live in the mountains. So while I think about it, I double back to Hoover Dam as I remember I can now buy things from Quartermaster Barden. The NCR has loads of weapons and ammo, and I return here periodically to buy out all their 357 but this amount of ammo is plenty for the rest of the run. Back at the Great Cons. Anyway, I started class. Great Cons taken care of, I return to Colonel Moore. She then tasked me with doing the same with the Omerda crime family on the Strip. On my way to the Strip, wouldn't you know it, my game crashes. Again. Once inside the Omerda's casino, my game crashes. To take out my frustration, I turn my gun loose on the Omerda thugs, knocking their heads loose. Literally. They end up putting up as much as a fight as the cons did, so not much. Back to Colonel Moore, and now it's time to neutralize the mastermind behind the Securitrons, Mr. House. Inside the Lucky 38, I talk to the man behind all the Securitrons, or at least one of his big computers. He tells me he wants the platinum chip that Benny stole from me at the beginning of the game, because it has data on it that can upgrade his Securitrons and tighten his grip on the strip. He then tells me that Benny's being held captive by Caesar's Legion. Because I want the XP for this quest, I put killing Mr. House on hold and head out to Caesar's camp. Most of Caesar's forces aren't too much to handle as long as I take them one or two at a time, but the Praetorian guards with their ballistic fists can kill me in one or two shots, so I end up running around the camp, taking shots when I've built enough distance between us. I do end up dying a couple times though. I remove Caesar's head and in a roundabout way, the tumor within it. You're welcome, Caesar. I find Benny tied up, get the platinum chip back, and decide to let him walk free. Killing him doesn't really bring justice here, and the only other option is to leave him here to die. But truthfully, being a prisoner to Caesar's Legion as long as he has is probably punishment enough. I return to Mr. House and I give him the platinum chip. 
I watch his demonstration for the Securitron Mark IIs for that sweet, sweet XP at the end. After which, I make my way into his hidden antechamber where his real body lies. Once inside, I ultimately decide to kill Mr. House instead of pacifying him. I feel like taking away his ability to control anything and putting him back inside this tube would basically amount to torture, so I put him out of his misery with two bullets, one of which either misses point blank or just phases right through him. I then go to the H&R Tool Factory to get a keycard. I dome a couple robo-brains. I don't even know what to say at this point. And then I do it all over again. I kill some robo brains, grab the key card, and kill a couple Mr. Handies. I then return to Colonel Moore once again to report my success over Mr. House and Caesar. For my next assignment, she tells me about a chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel that needs taken care of. This time, instead of telling me I have a choice between pacifying and killing them, she explicitly makes it clear she wants them all dead. I find no issue with this, so I make my way there. Oh yeah, my game crashed for I think the first time this run. I then find the Brotherhood who immediately take me hostage and strap a bomb to my neck. Now I really don't feel bad about killing them. They then take me to their leader, Elder McNamara, who tells me if I want to live, I'll take out an NCR Ranger nearby. If I don't, boom. If I try to leave the area, boom. If I try to fight them, you get the idea. I find Ranger Dobson hiding in a bunker and he's able to disarm my bomb collar. I have a repair skill of 100 at this point, so the fact that I couldn't do it myself is beyond me. Immediately following this, we are ambushed by some Brotherhood soldiers. Unfortunately, Dobson does not survive. I return to the Brotherhood chapter and start taking them down one by one. These fights were actually kind of tough. I don't have the best armor and some of their weapons, primarily the Tri-Beam Laser Rifle and the Gauze Rifle, deal massive damage. The latter one being a one-shot kill most of the time. Oh, you fucking idiot. Because they have such high armor rating with their power armor, I start to shoot the weapons out of their hands with vats, breaking them so they can only use weak laser pistols to fight me. Then I'm able to pump them full of lead until they're ready for nap time. Once I make it deeper inside to the scribes, it becomes much easier as most of them died in one or two shots to the head. After the scribes, I take down Elder McNamara and the remainder of the Brotherhood. I return to Colonel Moore with the good news and she tells me that the President is coming for a visit and I'm to help Ranger Grant with security. Ranger Grant has no respect for my own personal space, but I tell him I'm ready for the President's arrival. After the President's vertebrae lands, a totally not suspicious mechanic plants a totally not bomb on his plane, so I disarm it. I also take out the Legion Sniper disguised as an NCR Ranger and take his clothes for myself. And after giving a speech that was way too long, the president takes off and is safe. I return to Colonel Moore to tell her of my success, and now all that's left is the assault on Hoover Dam and the final fight with the Legate. I get the notice that this is the point of no return and the final mission of the game. I say I'm ready, and my game crashes for the final time of this run. Kind of poetic, really. General Lee Oliver tells me the Hoover Dam is under attack by Legion soldiers and this is our time to launch a counterattack and destroy the Legion once and for all. I make my way across the dam, ignoring most of the enemies, but I do steal this cool NCR Ranger outfit. Once at the Legates camp, I tell him it's time to die. This fight was... rough. Those of you who watched it live probably already know this. I'll spare you the near two hours it took me to finally kill this bastard and just show you the run that worked. Throughout the run, combat really only became difficult when I was very outnumbered. In New Vegas, any weapon that reloads one round at a time can have its reload interrupted whenever you take damage. It can also be interrupted while shooting the gun. Vats also behave strangely with these guns as sometimes your characters will keep walking in one direction or just stand still and not shoot at all. This became very frustrating over the run and led to my death many times. But, after almost two hours, I decided to just shoot myself full of drugs and only focus on the Legate until he was dead. And it actually worked. With the Legate dead, General Oliver arrives with backup to mop up the rest of the Legion. And with that, the game is over and I can finally answer the question. Can you beat Fallen New Vegas as the Arizona Ranger? Yes. Yes you can. It wasn't too bad a run really, but the end fight with the Legate did get me somewhat tilted. I was also somewhat underleveled, being only level 17 by the end of the game.
However, critical shots with the lucky hit like a train and building for crits like I did meant I was critting very often. Overall, I had a great time with this run, but before I do another New Vegas run, I'll be looking into getting some mods that can make the experience more stable, and hopefully, crash less. Anyway, thank you for watching, if you liked the video be sure to leave a thumbs up, and if you want to see more subscribe. Leave a comment below for what challenge run you want to see next, and with that, I'll see you next time. And so the courier who had cheated death in the cemetery outside Goodson.